Hi everyone, this is Amir, and we'll be going over the Committee Opinion 809 HPV or Human Papillomavirus Vaccination. So most of you probably already know that HPV is associated with cervical cancer, but it's associated with much more than that actually. It can cause anogenital cancers, which include cervical, vaginal, vulvar, penile, and anal, as well as oropharyngeal cancers, which include tongue and tonsils, and warts, which aren't as significant, but still unpleasant. In the U.S., there are about 13,000 new cases each year diagnosed, and about 4,000 deaths annually as well. There are lots of HPV strains, over 150. Out of all these, there are 13 associated with cervical cancer, 16 and 18 are the biggest offenders, and in particular, 16. These two are worth noting for your board exams. When it comes to genital awards, about 90% are due to 6 and 11. Again, these ones are also worth remembering too. Unfortunately, only about half of the women in the U.S. who are eligible for vaccination receive the complete series. Compared to other first world countries, this is lower than their rates of vaccination. Obviously, if we could increase the rates of vaccination, we could decrease the rates of new cases. Currently, there are three FDA-approved vaccines for HPV. There is a two-valent, four-valent, and nine-valent version of the vaccine. But to make things easier, on the market today, only the nine-valent version is available, and that's called Gardasil. Nine. Uh, what makes things a little bit confusing was Gardasil is also the name for the older four-valent version, but in the U.S., if you hear Gardasil being used in the office, the vaccine they are receiving is the nine-valent version. The target age for vaccination is 11 to 12. This is a number worth remembering for your boards as well. However, vaccination is recommended for all ages between 9 and 26. For this target age of 11 to 12, typically as OBGYNs, we are not seeing patients this young. However, we could help by educating and teaching parents about the importance about giving vaccination and encouraging them to follow up with their p child's pediatrician. Eventually, once they reach the catch-up period, which is ages 13 to 26, it's more likely for them to come to your office. And at that time, you should assess if they've been vaccinated if they have not, you should vaccinate them during that visit. You should always give the vaccine regardless of sexual activity, even if they have HPV or their sexual orientation. So none of these should be a reason to hold or not give the vaccine to your patient. The FDA has also approved the vaccination for ages 27 to 45. However, the recommendations are not necessarily to give it to everyone in this age range. At this time, it's a shared clinical decision, so you will talk with their patient about whether or not the risk of acquiring HPV or a new strain of HPV outweighs the benefits of getting the vaccine. Now let's talk about the specific details about vaccination timing and number of doses. When we talk about this, you could divide into three age groups. There's ages 9 to 14, then there's ages 15 to 26, and then 27 to 45. So let's talk about 9 to 14 first. Again, remember, the target age for vaccination is ages 11 to 12. During this group, you'll give two doses. You give one vaccine initially, and then 6 to 12 months after this first vaccine, you'll give the second dose. If for some reason the patient gets a vaccine early, and by early I mean less than five months from the first dose, then it is recommended to give a third dose in order to ensure that the patient is able to mount a proper immune response and create the appropriate amount of antibodies. For the other age ranges, that's ages 15 to 45, you'll give the you'll be giving three doses. But for the ages of 9 to 14, you only give two doses because studies have shown that this creates an equivalent antibody titer 
compared to the three doses you give to the older patients. Obviously, the vaccination is more effective before exposure to HPV. So what they've done is they've looked at the risk of a patient being sexually active, and studies have shown that about 20% of ninth graders are sexually active. So ninth graders, for a refresher, that's around ages 13 to 15. And then once you're at 12th grade or about to graduate high school, about half of those patients, or 55%, are sexually active. So that's why our target is ages 11 to 12 to hopefully vaccinate these patients before they become sexually active. Now, some parents may decline vaccination because they're concerned about the association with sex. However, you can reassure them that the vaccination is not associated with earlier onset of sexual activity or with higher rates of sexually transmitted infections. Moving along to the next age range, that's 15 to 26, the big difference here is you give three doses now. You give one dose initially, and then a second dose one to two months after the first dose, and the third dose is given six months again after the first dose. The key thing to remember here is, again, it's three doses, and that this changes at age 15. So these patients are more likely to be sexually active based off what we said before, but it's still unlikely that they've been exposed to all nine strains covered by the vaccine. And that's why we still want to give it to them because although it may not be as effective, it can still cover strains that they were not exposed to. Along that same line of thought, the committee opinion specifically says, do not test for HPV prior to vaccination. Obviously, you could still test them if you had to because of an abnormal pap smear, but for the purpose of giving the vaccine, you do not need to screen them with an HPV test. Now let's talk about ages 27 to 45. So the FDA has approved the vaccination for both men and women up until the age of 45. Again, these are older patients, so most of these patients are already exposed. So at this point, you can give the vaccine. The recommendation is not to give it to everyone in this age group, but to have a discussion with your patient and come to a decision together. It's best for patients who are at higher risk of getting exposed to a new strain of HPV. Risk factors that make a patient more likely to be exposed to a new strain are if they are a younger age, if they are not in a monogamous relationship, or if they've had recent new STI diagnoses. If a patient has previously received the four-valent vaccine, even if it was an incomplete course, ACOG does not recommend revaccination with a nine-valent vaccine to cover the extra five strains. Again, this is because of a limited benefit of vaccination, as well as associated cost with the vaccine, and there is also a short supply globally for the vaccine, so it is better suited for people who will more likely benefit from vaccination. Now let's review some special populations. Let's talk about pregnancy. So the recommendation is do not give the vaccine if they are pregnant. The thing about this to note is HPV is not a live vaccine. Theoretically, it could be safe, and the initial data appears reassuring that if accidentally given, it will not cause any teratogenic effects on the fetus. However, it is not well studied. If they did receive the vaccine prior to becoming pregnant and they were due for their second or third dose during pregnancy, you can resume after their deliver. It is safe after delivery and it is also safe if they are breastfeeding. Even though being pregnant is a contraindication, the committee opinion specifically says routine pregnancy testing is not recommended prior to vaccination. If your patient is immunocompromised, they could still receive the vaccine. Again, this is not a live vaccine, so it's safe for them to receive. The main difference, though, is you'll give them three doses, no matter how old they are. Remember, 
if they're ages 9 to 14, you typically only give two doses. But if they're immunocompromised, and even if they're in this age group, you'll give them three doses in order to ensure a robust immune response. Another thing worth noting is if there is a history of sexual abuse or assault, you want to give the vaccine as early as possible. And remember, the earliest age you could give the vaccine is nine years old. Now let's review boosters, revaccinations, and series completion. I like to say the HPV vaccine is a vaccine so easy, even a OBGYN can give it. And that's because there are really no special considerations here. There is never an indication for boosters. If a patient receives one dose of the vaccine and there's a prolonged delay from receiving their second or third dose, you do not need to restart the series. In other words, you can give the delinquent dose now, and if a third dose was due, you could give that four months after the delinquent dose. If for some reason you are unsure about the previous type of vaccine your patient received, you could always give them the nine-valent vaccine for their next dose. So if they came from a different country, or if you do not have their records, it is safe to give them the nine-valent vaccine. Here I included what strains are covered by each specific type of vaccine. You'll notice, first of all, that all of them cover 16 and 18. Remember, these are the two strains most associated with cervical cancer, and out of those, 16 is the most significant one. The four-valent vaccine also covers 6 and 11. Again, these strains, 6 and 11, are the strains responsible for the majority of genital warts. The nine-valent vaccine covers everything the four-valent vaccine does, plus these five additional strains. These all are associated with cervical cancer. So I would recommend remembering these four numbers, 6, 11, 16, and 18. Remember that 16 and 18 are associated with cancer, 16 is the worst, 6 and 11 are associated with genital warts. You can try to remember these five additional strains, but I do not think they're high yield and worth spending the time to remember. Now let's review the safety. Almost 300 million doses of HPV vaccine have been given, and there is no evidence for any severe side effects. The most common side effects are syncope and site reactions. By site reactions, I mean like erythema or swelling at the site injection. The committee opinion specifically recommends observing adolescents for 15 minutes after administration, and that's to make sure they don't syncopize. There are, however, two specific allergies or contraindications that are worth mentioning here. Both the four-valent and nine-valent vaccine is contraindicated if a patient has an immediate hypersensitivity. And remember, immediate hypersensitivity, that's a type one or anaphylaxis to yeast. And the reason this is the case is because these vaccines are grown in baker's yeast, so they can cause anaphylaxis if a patient has this allergy. The two valent vaccine is contraindicated in patients who have an allergy to latex. And this is because the two valent form comes in a pre-filled syringe with a tip cap that contains latex. So there is a theoretical exposure risk and therefore should be avoided in a patient who has a latex allergy. So again, the vaccine is very effective and it's most effective when the patient is not previously exposed. However, because it's unlikely for a patient to be exposed to all nine strains, the vaccine should be given even if they are HPV positive and sexually active. The benefit of giving vaccination is it reduces the rates of cancer and genital warts. However, it is worth noting, even if a patient has received the HPV vaccine, they should continue routine screening and should not have any changes in the screening frequency or route to screening. Now let's review the recommendations and conclusions from this committee opinion. The target age is 11 to 12. However, it is recommended for everyone ages 9 to 26. It is approved for older ages and you can give it after a discussion with your patient for ages 27 to 45. If there is a history of sexual abuse or assault, vaccination should be given as soon as possible, which is ages nine or above. ACOG recommends against giving the nine valent vaccine if they have already received a quadrivalent vaccine in the past. You should always give it and you should not consider sexual activity, HPV exposure, or orientation when giving the vaccine. If the patient is pregnant, you should not give it at this time due to lack of data 
but it is safe to give if the patient is breastfeeding. Do not screen for HPV or for pregnancy prior to vaccination. If there are any mistakes or errors in the presentation, I'll try to include them here. Hopefully this remains blank. And if you are interested in any additional reading, I recommend the committee opinion as well as the CDC recommendations on HPV vaccination. Thank you all and have a good day.